Man, it's amazing all this stuff that comes up on your computer. Well, hello, everyone, um, and welcome to the Greater Palm Bay Chamber of Commerce monthly June luncheon, luncheon. Um, another virtual meeting, and uh, I thank you all for joining us. My name is Nancy Peltzen, and I'm president and CEO of the Greater Palm Bay Chamber of Commerce. Our mission is to serve, advocate, and promote as the trusted voice for our business community. And we try to bring businesses together so that we can do collectively what we can't do by ourselves. As they say, there's strength in numbers. Um, and so we are um, your voice for advocacy, for personal professional development, and we are here to equip you with what you need to help you grow your business. Uh, we always have a fun fact. And so we, um, well, this isn't uh, quite so fun. But I wanted to give a, a bit of update on uh, what's happening in Brevard County. For those of you that don't know, our chamber has on our website a dashboard that comes from the Florida Chamber and it shows the COVID cases locally. So it's just for Brevard County. Uh, we have 400, had 424. Those aren't all current. A lot have recovered, uh, but that's just how many cases we have had since the start of this. It is showing that the number is increasing and the average daily new cases is 4.1. Um, and that has unchanged. But what is changed is the weekly percentage of positive cases and it's very low, 0.8% and it's increasing though. So that's a number we have to watch, especially since we had, oh, I don't know, 100,000 people or more uh, come for the shuttle launch. Oh, I keep calling it shuttle, the uh, SpaceX rocket launch. Um, you know, the, there was a lot of people that came in and, and thank goodness tourism, all the hotels were filled and, you know, a lot of the restaurants and, and services here in Brevard County. But, um, you know, that may cause a spike in our numbers. So just something to be aware of. You can check every day. It's updated daily through the Florida Chamber and it's on our Greater Palm Bay Chamber of Commerce website. Uh, the SBA also showed that more than 343,000 Floridian businesses have received 30.5 billion from the Paycheck Protection Program loans. So they have, you know, kind of caught up. They're still processing loans. There is a bit of money left. So we haven't had that other round of funding confirmed in both the, the Senate and the House. So there should be another round coming uh, from the um, national federal level but um you know it's still there so if you have we're not sure about applying you weren't sure what your business was going to look like it's still available and if you need assistance we can get you coordinated uh the sba does a great job you've got marty and sandy fremer they are fabulous they can walk you through things um, to help you with that especially now that it's not quite so crazy uh, one of the sad statistics that has been coming up and uh, we're looking at working with the Florida Chamber of Commerce on the number of children that are living in poverty. Right now, there's more than 3 million Floridians that are uh, living in poverty and almost 870,000, a little bit more than that, are children under the age of 18. And as this pandemic has proceeded, um, more and more people that were on the fringe are um, needing the food banks and and um, and help with their basic needs. So it's something that we are um, looking at being part of what that solution is going to look like. So we'll, as it rolls out with the Florida Chamber, we will bring you information on that. And they also have a, a dashboard that we'll put on our website to um, let you know about that. Because the statistics have shown that children that grow up in poverty are, you know, they are starting at a disadvantage and only 53% of children are actually ready for kindergarten when they get to kindergarten. So if we can increase that number, then their success in the long term will definitely increase. So we want to be part of the solution for our, um, you know, employees of the future. So, and our future entrepreneurs. So I will see if my little clicky works. <laughs> uh.
Oh, it's not yet. Hold on. Oh, there we go. It's just very slow moving across. Hopefully that doesn't go twice. Oh, yes, it did. Is there a way to move that back, Carolina? Sorry, I forgot it takes my computer so slow it takes forever to move. Yeah, there we go. Thank you. All I can say is thank you, Carolina. I can, I'm not sure about ever doing these alone. It's just there's always something that comes up. Um, so we have our Pledge of Allegiance. Um, I know it seems kind of strange to be doing this remotely, but um, I think it's just something that we do. So if you want to say it along with me, um, just kind of our, like I said, our sense of what we normally do. So I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And once again, we certainly miss our Rob Medina and his hoorah. But um, moving along, <laughs> uh, we have with us, I'm very happy today, is uh, Tracy Strotter. She is the chairwoman of our board of directors. And Kudos to her for taking this on for the second year. Uh, normally the chairperson changes out every year and she, um, I don't know, had a weak moment and said, um, yeah, she would do it a second year. So um, she has just been phenomenal. Um, I've been working with her and our incoming chair, Jessica Moore, just to keep the chamber, you know, moving forward and, and getting a lot of great um, things done. So I really just wanted to give a thank you. Thank you to Tracy for all that she's got on her plate and yet still finding time to uh, really help the chamber. So thank you, Tracy. And I will now turn the program over to her and I will click the button once as we move forward when you are announcing all the upcoming, um, yes, our ambassadors and board of directors. Okay, awesome. Well, I'm a, I am very excited to be here and um, it, it was, not really a weak moment when I said yes to a second year. Uh, I just have such a passion for um, what the chamber does for small business, what the chamber represents in the community. And so I really um, feel honored to serve in this capacity and use my strengths um, to help grow the chamber and just you know, help with the forward momentum in the community and the small businesses. So I am very honored to be here and thank you for having me. Um, I am going to introduce our board of directors. Uh, we have Adam Copenhaver with Linkio, Alfreda Wooten, FPL, Beverly Wiggins, Holmanstead Senior Care, Chelsea Camaro, Five Star Claims Adjusting, David Alpazar with Alpazar Law, David Pett, Health First Health Plans, Dominic Paz, Moore's Communications, Amy Wendell, Aloha Maintenance, George Galetko, Waste Management, Holly Tanner, LH Tanner Construction, Jessica Moore, 142 Productions, Keith G, um, Children's Hunger Project, Rob Salonen, Florida Tech, Sarah Levante, EDC, and Shelly Kuhn, ASAP Pest Solutions, and myself, Tracy Strotter, with Everything Regard. Our ambassadors, um, and our, our ambassadors um, play a key role in welcoming new members. They participate in our um, ribbon cuttings and really kind of hold the hands of new members and introduce them and that kind of stuff. So this is a really important leadership role. Um, Christine Walker with Blank Canvas, Deb Jensen, LF Staffing, Diane Bryson, True Choice Technologies, Ginger Aolo, um, BRG Air Systems, Greg Kimos, Linkio, Heather Casbero, A Mother's Touch Movers, Janice Fox, Spotlight Magazine, Jennifer Helen, Seniors Helping Seniors, um, Jennifer Valerie, Valerie um, Trivent Financial, Joe Rowett, um, Florida Health, Ken Stamp, Hometown News, Mark um, Davos, uh, Quan G, and Tara Linnell, Tara's Animal Care. We also have several trustees and um, the trustees play a very important um, financial role in the chamber 
and all the things and help with all of the um, programs and things that the chamber brings to our membership. So our Emerald Trustee Partnership is with the City of Palm Bay. Gold Trustee Partners include Waste Management, Health First, Palm Bay Air and Heat. Our Silver Trustee members, um, City of West Melbourne, BRG Air Systems, FPL, Florida Tech, L3 Harris, Riverview Senior Resort Living, um, bronze trustees include Sam's Club, Print Depot, Jive Financial, Bass Pro Shop, Edward Jones with Kevin Chancellor, ASAP Pest Solutions, Yellow Dog Cafe, Partners in Education, Brevard Public Schools, LH Tanner Construction, Adams Homes, Michael Gregg, um, Michael Gregg Search, Linkio Publix, Promise in Brevard, Sandy Mickelson, Home Two Suites in Hyatt Place, Victoria Landing, Waterfront Assisted Living and Memory Care, Buena Vida Estates, TD Bank, Orlando Melbourne International Airport, Florida Healthcare Plans, Morris Comp, and Tink Wizards. Our media trustees include everythingbrevard.com, Hometown News, Saving Safari, 142 Productions, Space Coast Magazines, Senior Scene, Sierra Voice, and Brevard Business News. We have some new and renewing members, so I'd like to welcome all new members and thank our renewing members. We have um, ABS Security, All Florida Properties, Artemis, Brevard County Firefighters, Brevard Family Partnership, BRG Air Systems, Castaway Cove, Dale Sorensen Real Estate, Holman Group Inc., Horizon Broadcasting, Marty L. Ward Coaching, Mr. Palm Bay Realty, um, Palms Rehab and Healthcare Center, Port Malabar Holiday Park, Pro Finish Paint and Body, Royal Palm Charter School, Seacoast National Bank, Sybil's Relaxation Station, Tank Wizards, and Town of Grant Valcaria. So the Chamber has a referral program, and the way that it works is if you provide or refer a member to the Chamber and they mention your name as the, how they wind up, wound up becoming a member, the Chamber will give you 25 Chamber bucks and those chamber bucks, if I understand correctly, can be used for your luncheons, for programs, for um, anything towards what the chamber is putting on. Is that correct, Nancy? Yeah, so if they want to use it towards their membership for sponsoring an event, for coming to an event, um, they can save them up and use them all at one time or um, however they'd like to use the chamber bucks. Okay. Yeah. Chamber dollars. Our box. Yeah. Okay. So I think we're ready to move on to our program and I would like to take a minute and introduce our keynote speaker for today's luncheon. It's Kevin Downs, PCA from Five Star Claims Adjusting. Born in St. Petersburg, Florida, Kevin Downs is a Florida native and has lived in the Sunshine State his entire life. After graduating from the University of Florida, go Gators, in 2000, with a degree in finance, Kevin sold insurance policies for the first five years of his career. Kevin then became a Florida State licensed public claims adjuster following Hurricane Wilma, which struck Florida in October of 2005. In June of 2006, Kevin and his teammates started five, claim, five star claims adjusting, which has helped more than 30,000 claimants recover over 8 million from property insurance carriers. With over 100 adjusters and 20 plus team in office staff, they are the largest public adjusting firm in the state of Florida and are passionate about helping policyholders. Kevin will now present insurance hints and tips for your home and business. Who is telling your insurance company how much you're owed? Welcome, Kevin. Let me, uh, let me on. 
Yep. Okay, perfect. Hopefully you guys can all hear me. Hello there virtually to everyone. Uh, thank you for that kind introduction. So uh, my hope today is to be able to create maximum value for you guys uh, and girls, obviously. And, um, you know, just give you a little bit of this information that I have up here over the last 15 years in hopes that if uh, anything ever happens to your property, um, that you will be better equipped to be able to recover monies from your insurance company if you need to, whether it's a plumbing issue or roof issue or mold or what have you, um, sinkholes, fire, lightning strikes, uh, you know, stucco issues. I mean, you name it, we've probably seen it, especially with over 30,000 claims. And uh, Tracy had mentioned a, a recovery number. I wanted to just make sure I um, corrected that. So we've actually delivered over $800 million in, uh, in Florida over the last 15 years. This year, we'll cross the billion dollar threshold. So that's over a billion dollars recovered for Floridians uh, dealing with insurance claims um, of all types of magnitude. Um, we help businesses, we help individuals. In fact, um, the greatest claim I ever did was for a little old Spanish man in Palm Bay. I got him uh, $1,600 for his bathroom after his insurance company went out of business. So um, he was very happy about that, as you can imagine. So let's dive right in. Um, insurance hints and tips for the home, for the business. We're gonna talk about a lot of great stuff and uh, I'll probably have to fly through some of it because again, after 15 years, you know, we could, we could probably talk for quite a long time, but I do wanna keep this very fluid. So if anybody has any questions uh, or anything that they wanna dive into specifically or elaborate on when we, when we touch on it, by all means, I'm happy to spend as much time as you guys would like. And then Chelsea, how do I advance? Just enter, Enter. okay. Thank goodness I have Chelsea here with me. So um, she's like my Vanna White, if you will. So uh, Florida native, yeah, as you had mentioned and um, delivered quite a bit. Actually uh, testified in a lot of trials too, believe it or not, here in, uh, in Brevard County. Um, we've uh, made some case law, um, you know, for the, for the insureds, for the people, which is great. So, um, but the one thing I do wanna mention as a disclaimer, I am not an attorney. So I can't give any legal advice um, naturally. And what we do, we work with about 20 to 25 different law firms that help our clients um, and they get paid by the insurance companies, which is great. So it doesn't cost the client anything. But anything that I say in terms of, uh, you know, statutes and legal advice and things like that, um, you guys are responsible to, uh, you know, check with your own attorneys on that good stuff. One thing I will tell you is, uh, you know, we've inspected, me personally, I've inspected thousands of properties throughout my career. And um, it's something that we're gonna talk a little bit more about as we get into this. Okay, so hopefully any of you that have ever dealt with an insurance claim uh, did not find yourself feeling like that, right? Like you're chasing your tail. Um, but naturally, again, you know, part of the goal of this teaching is to help you uh, be as effective as possible should you own a property and ever have to try to collect from your insurance policy. So insurance, what is it and who needs it? Well, essentially, you know, uh, insurance is defined as a promise to pay you for a potential future loss. So naturally, we spend a lot of our uh, lives, you know, paying premiums, hoping that we never have to use it. But when that time comes to actually file a claim and collect, we want to make sure that we're able to do that. And we want to do that as quickly as possible. Um, one thing that we uh, can all agree on, I think, is an insurance policy only has value if you can actually collect from it. So uh, I don't know anybody that would say that it's still valuable, even if I can never get a penny out of it. Um, and unfortunately, we have seen that. We've seen people that uh, you know, were denied and could not recover. And so we wanna help you avoid that, but it only has value if you can collect from it. One thing that I also like to ask, and uh, it's obviously a lot more fun when we're doing this in person, but um, if anybody knows where the term underwriter actually came from, and so far after lots of teachings and thousands and thousands of people, I have yet to find somebody that had the answer. So I'm just gonna go ahead and give it to you. So years ago in uh, Great Britain, which is where the largest underwriter um, is domiciled today, that's Lloyd's of London, largest in the world, um, but basically years ago, uh, I think it was like the 1600s, you know, they were sending a lot of ships all around the world. And so in the pubs, before a ship would go out and leave port, they would put the name of the ship up on a board. 
and anyone in the pub that wanted to ensure the risk of that ship making a successful jo uh, voyage could write their name under the name of the ship. If the ship succeeded and completed the voyage, they got to collect a premium and kept those monies. If the ship did not make it, then they had to in turn pay up. And so uh, because of them placing their name under the name of the ship, that's where the term underwriter began. Um, so just a little fact for you right there. So how to best prepare before a potential claim. And this is something that if we could teach the entire state and really the entire country and they actually would uh, put these things in motion, it would make our job um, significantly easier. I can't tell you how many times we sit with a property owner after they've already done things and made mistakes. And then uh, when I tell them, you know, essentially what's in their policy, um, you know, their mouth drops. So naturally we'd like to try to help you all get ahead of that. In case you ever need to use your insurance policy, we want you to be able to be best prepared. But in essence, getting a baseline inspection is something that's absolutely critical. Um, and most of you have probably never even heard that or done that. And, um, you know, one thing that I would like to mention to you is if you've ever heard the term uh, pre-existing condition, right? That's not usually a good thing when you're dealing with an insurance company. And so uh, we've seen a lot of exclusions that have come out and, and uh, certainly more that are on the way. But basically, in essence, if uh, something happens, we get hit by a storm or, or what have you, and your insurance company says, uh, oh, no, this stuff was already there. Um, you know, what would you have in your file to say, no, it wasn't? you know, chances are nothing. And so naturally we recommend uh, a baseline inspection, especially for commercial properties, but we do them for residential as well. Also having your vendors on standby is, uh, is a good practice so that if something happens, if a storm hits or if your plumbing uh, bursts or uh, you need your house dried out or whatever it might be, you know, that you actually have uh, those vendors on standby so you know exactly who to call and you can get them out there quickly and um, you can trust that they're gonna do a good job. In addition to that, the policy, the insurance policy, that's gonna help dictate the rules to the game. And naturally, uh, there's a lot of things in policies that people are just not aware of. Even the agents sometimes are not aware. And so one of the big things that we highlight in policies um, would be the dispute resolution, right? What if, uh, you know, what if the insurance company says, I'm gonna pay you $1,000 and we say, no, 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 we need $50,000, right? Well, what does that look like? How do we go and get the other $49,000 from them? And a lot of times that's gonna be dictated in your policy. And there's some stuff in the marketplace, particularly in the commercial policies, which is super scary and a huge disadvantage to the commercial property owner. So if you had that in your policy, when would be the best time to know about it? Definitely before something happens and you need a hand. So those are things we look for, deductibles, coverage amounts, and so forth. So here's a couple of examples of some of the things we've come across out there. On the left, we have an exclusion for uh, Hurricane Irma damages, right? And so basically, if you read that language carefully, uh, especially if you're an attorney, you would understand how powerful this, uh, this language is. But basically what it says is, you know, we're not going to cover a loss that was contributed by directly or indirectly Hurricane Irma. And so I want to fast forward. And let's say that uh, later this summer we have a storm and your property is hit and you file a claim and you have this exclusion in there and the insurance company sends an engineer and they say, well, unfortunately, you know, when Irma hit this area, you had some small effects to your roof and some slight effects to your, your windows and your glazing. And so now none of it is covered. My question for you would be, what do you have in your file to prove that Irma did not affect your property? You probably don't have anything because if you assumed you weren't affected, chances are you wouldn't have done anything about it. And so again, we recommend a baseline inspection. If there's no issues at the property, then now would be a great time to issue you a certificate to prove that in case we do have a, a storm a storm eventually. Um, sorry, I saw something pop up on the screen here. And so uh, the other one on the right is a dispute resolution. Um, what's really interesting about this, we have actually seen this in about 25% of all commercial policies that we review. So one out of four. So if any of you own commercial properties, there's a good chance you might have this in your policy. And uh, it is not a good thing. 
Um, basically what it says is if, uh, you know, there's a dispute, there's a disagreement in terms of how much you should receive, it's going to be referred to an arbitration. Arbitration is not typically a bad thing per se, except if you read down uh, a little over halfway down the page, you'll see that highlight. And so in this particular case, the seat of the arbitration is going to be in New York and it's going to be governed by New York law. So let me ask you a question. If you're the insured, do you think that is an advantage to you? Do you think that you now having to arbitrate in New York under New York law is better for you? Or would you rather do that here in Florida? And obviously, I think we can all get the answer to that. So naturally, my question for you is if you have this stuff in your policy, would you want to know about it? And would you want to change it before you actually need to try to collect from your policy? And the answer is absolutely. Absolutely. So the two big things, the big takeaways, um, baseline inspections and review the policy, right? Somebody that recovers money from insurance companies should review your policy uh, in advance of you having a claim so that if there's things in there that you aren't aware of and are not good for you, we can get your agent to hopefully get those out of there for you. Any questions on that or should we just roll right through? Will I see questions if they pop up? Okay. Perfect. Chelsea's going to let me know if you have any questions. So here's another hot topic, uh, the business interruption. I know a lot of you um, probably have uh, been affected by the COVID-19 and the, uh, the pandemic, as the president referenced it. Um, and so a lot of our clients are asking questions like, hey, you know, my policy has business interruption coverage. Um, can I file a claim for the COVID-19? And will I be able to recover some of my lost revenue and things of that nature? And right now, unfortunately, um, the jury is out literally on all of that. Many, many, many commercial policies have a virus exclusion. Um, a lot of them also require physical damage to the property. That in itself poses a question, you know, what is physical damage? If somebody walked in and sneezed on a desk, and it needed to be decontaminated because of the uh, potential virus, would that be considered physical damage? Um, a lot of courts would say yes, some courts would say no. So, you know, the, uh, the unfortunate part is um, the jury is out. There's no clear path to whether or not these carriers will actually be paying these claims. We have processed some of these claims. Um, I would recommend that if you have lost revenue and you have business interruption, I don't think it would hurt to at least report it to the carrier. Um, we would be happy to do that for you. We'd be happy to also review your policies for you for free and tell you whether or not you have coverage and if, uh, if it's a possibility. Um, but right now, um, like I said, the jury is still out. There is a tremendous amount of uh, activity in the courts, in the legislatures, trying to find a way to help offset some of this lost business income. Um, but we're going to have to just to continue to monitor it closely. And again, if any of you would like us to review your policy or would like us to assist you with at least reporting the losses, we'd be happy to do that. And that is definitely something that we would recommend be done by any of you business owners that have a business policy. Tracy has a question. So what was the actual purpose of business interruption? And it's a great question, Tracy. And again, as advocates for you, um, we are a little frustrated, but we also understand that, you know, uh, and on the face of a contract, you know, there's things that are going to be covered and things that are not going to be covered. And so, you know, right now the insurance companies are um, relying heavily on the virus exclusion. And they're also relying heavily on the lack of physical damage to the property in terms of their definition. And so normally when we see business interruption covered, you know, let's imagine that um, you did have a storm hit or you had a large plumbing loss, right? A pipe burst and, you know, your salon was flooded and, you know, you had to cancel your appointments for a week and you lost that revenue. You know, typically that benefit in the policy is going to help you not only replace those lost profits, but it will also help you with your carrying costs. In other words, your expenses that you had to continue to incur to keep your business open, um, despite the fact that you didn't have the revenue that you typically had. So um, there is a benefit to the business interruption, whether or not it's going to cover the COVID-19 losses. The jury is still out, um, but hopefully that at least helped answer that question for you.
thanks for asking that, Tracy. And so here's something else that we run into quite often, you know, can a contractor assist with my claim? And so perhaps I should, you know, just back up a, qu a quick second and explain exactly what it is that we do. So we're licensed and appointed through the Department of Financial Services, through DFS in Florida. And we are adjusters that are appointed to represent the owners, not the insurance companies. And so quite often what happens is we will see contractors, uh, mostly roofing contractors, but sometimes um, you know general contractors as well. But basically we'll see contractors that want to take care of the claim for the owner. They come along and they say, hey, you know, I'll manage the claim, I'll get the insurance to pay the tab and then I'll put everything back together. And unfortunately in Florida, that's uh, against the law. Um, it's potentially a third degree felony. And the reason that is, is because there's a conflict of interest. So just like we are licensed and appointed and heavily regulated, we cannot participate in the repair process. We are solely focused on recovering the funds for you so that you can put everything back together, but we're not allowed to then turn around and actually fix it for you and benefit from that. And so naturally, as you can imagine, contractor would be uh, limited by that same conflict. You know, for a contractor to come along and say, oh, I have to tear this entire property down and rebuild the entire thing and I need you to pay for it. Naturally, that's not going to bode well for the insurance companies. And so here was just a, a warning that was issued by our CFO, Jimmy Patronas. And we do see from time to time, um, you know, contractors that are actually, uh, you know, brought up on charges and so forth. So if you have a contractor approach you that says, hey, I'll take care of the claim for you and then I'll go and fix it. Um, first question you should ask is, are you a licensed public adjuster? And if the answer is no, you should probably start by speaking with one of those. What is an assignment of benefits? How does it affect me? You know, this is actually um, going by the wayside, so to speak. But last year in July, the legislature had passed some new laws which governed the assignment of benefits. And basically, uh, a set of benefits is something that is very dangerous for you, the policyholder, because you're essentially giving your claim and all of the rights and benefits to a third party. And so when you sign something like an assignment of benefits, it's absolutely critical you understand what you're signing. It wasn't always bad. Assignment of benefits used to be used by good companies that came out in an emergency situation. And what it did is it assured them that they would be able to be paid by your insurance company. So if you have a, you know, again, we'll go back to the plumbing issue, right? You come home and uh, water is coming out your front door and you obviously had a burst pipe and you need to call a company to come dry out the house and you're not standing there with a check in hand to pay them. How do they get paid? What is their commitment? You know, if they start work, they're going to want to get paid. And so they used to use this assignment of benefits as a means to protect themselves and make extra sure that they would get paid by the insurance company. Unfortunately, what happened is uh, unscrupulous contractors began to run around getting these signed by policyholders um, and then not doing any work. And essentially, you've given your claim away. You can't take it back. When the checks come, they don't go to you. They go to a third party and you lose all control over whether or not you have any say in getting your property fixed, getting it fixed properly and quickly. And so uh, the takeaway here is, um, if you don't know exactly what you're signing, do not sign. Yeah, seven minutes left. Wow, this is flying by, okay. So uh, the types of adjusters. So three types of adjusters. The top two, they work for the insurance company. You have an independent adjuster, and then the bottom one is what we do, public adjuster, right? So a public adjuster is the only adjuster in the state of Florida that actually looks after you, not the insurance company. I can't tell you how many times I will meet a property owner and they'll tell me, uh, oh, my, my adjuster is coming out tomorrow. And I'll say, excuse me, um, you said my adjuster. Um, did you hire a public adjuster? Oh, no, 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 the, the adjuster from the insurance company. Well, let's be very clear here. Um, the adjuster from the insurance company works for who? The insurance company. And so naturally, the adjuster is going to be looking out for the insurance company, not necessarily you, the property owner. And so in Florida, you have the ability to have your own adjuster who can help deal with the insurance company's adjuster and naturally, uh, ideally, to get you what you need so you can restore your property. This is a study that was done by the state of Florida. 
which showed that if you have your own public adjuster in Florida, on average, you recover 747% more money. Now, I will tell you that we have the data. We have over 30,000 claims that we've processed, and it's pretty accurate. We typically get about seven to 10 times more money for people uh, once we're involved than if they've tried to manage the claim on their own. So my suggestion would be uh, you always want to get an advocate and you want to get some uh, free advice and a free inspection for sure. Anytime you're ever dealing with any sort of repairs, roofing, plumbing, mold, you name it, when in doubt, bring us out and get some sort of advice at least to decide how to best manage that process for yourself and your family. And so here's some stats from Hurricane Irma. Uh, residential property, almost a third of all claims were closed, never even paying a single penny. Um, same thing on the commercial uh, commercial property. If you look down about halfway, 60,000 commercial claims filed, 25,000 of them were closed without ever paying a penny. I will tell you that those people uh, that never received a single dollar, I would find it highly unlikely that they ever had a public adjuster come and inspect their property. And so again, um, if there's something you could take away from this, anytime you're dealing with any sort of damage, get some advice, get free advice, get a free inspection. And uh, at least at a minimum, you'll have some good information and you can make better decisions. This is a wind map uh, from a forensic weather expert. I just wanted to show you guys some of uh, the effects of our area. So we had winds ranging anywhere from 70 to 80 miles an hour all across Brevard County. I think last year alone, we delivered over $50 million right here in Brevard to people to fix their homes, fix their commercial properties. We're talking about things like roofs, windows, interiors. And so, uh, you know, again, if, if you had any concerns whatsoever, if you're just not even sure, get a free inspection. It doesn't cost anything. And at a minimum, you'll get a certificate of good condition, which says, hey, as of June this year, your property was in great shape. And if we have a future storm, you don't have to worry about them arguing pre-existing conditions. Steps to take when making a claim with the insurer, best practices. So, you know, always be polite. It's one thing I can tell you. I can't tell you how many times that I've dealt with insurance company adjusters. They were unkind. We don't have to be that way to them. We simply just understand that people sometimes have a bad day. The other big thing is, uh, I don't know is 100% an acceptable answer. Please don't ever guess, don't try to tell an elaborate story. Um, I don't know is a 100% acceptable answer. The other big thing I want you to take away from here is if the insurance company is asking you to do a recorded statement or an examination under oath, these are very official positions that they're taking. I strongly recommend you have somebody advocating on your side of the equation. Do not do a recorded statement. Do not do an examination under oath without having your own public adjuster or your own attorney um, because chances are, unfortunately, if you don't do that, they're going to ask you things that they may not even need to be asking you, shouldn't be asking you, and you might start guessing, and before you know it, you just walked into a denied claim, which might be a difficult hole to dig you out of. So what types of damage would you potentially file a claim for? So we've had hailstorms that have come through our area. Obviously, uh, Irma was the last hurricane. We've seen a lot of wind damages, um, business interruption, you know, plumbing issues is a big one. You know, we have a lot of cast iron drain lines. Um, even in some areas of Palm Bay, believe it or not, we've actually delivered checks for sinkholes, believe it or not. Um, and so, you know, anytime that you're dealing with repairs around your property, um, it doesn't hurt to just get some free advice and get a free inspection. Doesn't always mean everything is gonna be a claim. Trust me, we don't wanna spin our wheels either, but we're happy to inspect property for free. And chances are, if you're owed a check, you would probably wanna know that. And so uh, we deal with mold, um, we deal with uh, sinkhole issues, lightning strikes, um, you know, windstorm issues, hail damage, pretty much anything you can think of, we've probably dealt with it, especially out of 30,000 claims. There's just some examples of some of the things that we've addressed throughout the years. Stucco is a big one. A lot of people, uh, you know, their, their home, the stucco begins to bubble and what they don't realize is that was initiated by a wind event 
but because they don't know that, they simply call in, you know, stucco damage to their carrier, the carrier denies a claim, and it was all just because you didn't have enough information. So it's important when in doubt, bring us out, let's do a free inspection and at least give you some free advice and some free information. And then if you would like us to advocate and be your adjuster, obviously that's how we feed our families. This is a, uh, a property in uh, Palm Bay and um, we thought it was very fitting. So they were initially told they were below their deductible after Irma. And uh, I think it took us about 90 days, maybe 120 days or so, we delivered them $3.1 million, right? And so obviously in your mind, you're thinking, how is that possible? How could we go from below the deductible to 3.1 million? I can tell you that we have uh, countless stories of that. And I think a big part of it is um, who's doing the inspecting, right? Who's inspecting the property? Who's documenting the damages? Who's doing the testing? Who's building the claim package? If you are simply sitting back and allowing the insurance company to tell you what they think they should pay you, unfortunately, the odds are things are gonna be missed. And in this case, there was a lot of things that were missed. How are we doing? Okay, she said I have to go wrap it up. Uh, okay, Cindy Hunt had a same, which is what? How are we doing on time? Oh, gotcha, yeah, so we're, so we're almost, oh, how long to file a claim? So windstorm claims, three years. Hail would be included in that. Hail or wind, three years. Any other types of claims, five years. So if you had a plumbing issue four and a half years ago or an AC overflow, um, believe it or not, it's not too late for us to come out and at least take a look for you. Yeah. Will they raise my rates? Will they drop me? Great questions. The answer is no. Chances are your rates are already going up and you didn't even file a claim. So you have protections under the legislature. And the simple fact is if you're paying for a policy and you have damage to your property and they should be paying you to restore it, that would be the right time for you to go ahead and recover those benefits. So again, in Florida, thank goodness, we have a good legislator and they do look out for us. Help me. So when in doubt, bring us out. If you guys have any sort of issues, if you would like to have a free policy review, a free baseline inspection, um, again, you don't have to hire us. It's uh, totally free. And we would be happy to come out, issue you a certificate of good condition. We'd be happy to review your policy and also enroll you into our priority inspection program so that if a storm hits, one of our 100 plus licensed public adjusters will be at your property right away to help build a claim package for you and tell you how much your insurance company should be paying you. Um, I think that's it, right? Yeah, good. So I got through it and then there's the last slide. Whoop, no, just kidding. There's the last slide. There's my band of white. Thank you guys so much. Uh, that was a lot. I typically had at least an hour, uh, if not two, and uh, we shortened the class quite a bit, but hopefully you got at least something good out of it. And um, I certainly appreciate the honor to be able to be here with you all. I'd much rather do this in person where we can high five and hug, but uh, I guess we'll save that for a later date. So thank you again. Thanks so much, Kevin, that was great. We're just gonna put up our slideshow again. And um, I can do a testimonial because during Irma, well, anyway, we had a tornado come through the condo and the roof was ripped off and they did the assignment of benefits, everything wrong that you could possibly do. Um, but uh, on a personal note, they, I took them on for just my condo and yeah, I'd been turned down. They said there was $400 damage. My deductible was about a thousand or two thousand dollars and they said you know that the insurance company said no and five star came in and just um yeah knocked it out of the park it was amazing and very professional and great to deal with so i can't say enough good things about uh uh, utilizing them. So thank you very much, Kevin. This was great and a perfect uh, segue for our disaster recovery week that we are having in July. And um, I typed that into the minutes there and it'll be on our slide. I know Caroline's just um, setting that up. So we'll talk a little bit more about that as we get to it. But uh, disaster, when we think of disaster recovery, being here in Florida, we always just think hurricanes. And I'm sure that Kevin and Chelsea can tell you that certainly as a lot of the damage that happens, but you know, between sinkholes and uh, plumbing backups and um, you know, fires, and there's so much more than just um, hurricanes. So you wanna make sure that you really are prepared for disasters that could happen. So um, 
we will be discussing it for a whole week. We didn't want to bore you with just, um, you know, half a day of going on like we did last time. So we're breaking it up into small chunks. So trying to move to the next, oh, there we go. Okay, so um, the police did their awards um, remotely. So that was kind of funny. Uh, we didn't, we weren't able to get that in here for today. So we will make sure that for next month, we are able to um, put the awards in there. Uh, Florida Tech uh, has a number of uh, things that you can access online. So I know they don't have their in-person continuing education programs going on right now, but they still have online access to some of the teachings that they have. So uh, we appreciate Florida Tech sponsorship and uh, look forward to when, um, I guess they are open though for the kids to enroll for the fall semester. So they said that they are taking uh, dormitory um, applications now and that. So if you have, uh, a child that's looking to go to Florida Tech, then they are open and um, accepting that for, for the coming fall. And then our next one is for business of the month. And I guess we could still do that. You know, it's funny that we're in this, um, oh, there it goes slowly, but surely. Um, we can still do it remotely, but we just thought it's a disservice to the business to not, you know, get the full photo and, um, you know, we put it on our Intel and really get to celebrate. So we'll be bringing that shortly, but uh, Community Credit Union is your local hometown credit union. You know Rick Roach and he's just amazing and they help with business loans. And so if there's any of you that are still looking for funding, going to your hometown banker first is always the best option. A lot of them have been fast approved for uh, doing SBA loans. So reach out to your banker. Don't get overwhelmed or unsure. It's always good to talk to your banker first. So I know Community Credit Union is been in this community for a very long time and they are really here to help the small business. So we thank them for their sponsorship and then our upcoming events. So this is, okay, thank you. Um, okay, normally we have a page on each one, but they're all virtual now. So um, they're all under our chamber chat virtual meetings. So tomorrow, if you have not signed up, we have Glenn Shepard, dealing with difficult people. It's, it's like how to manage people and, and deal with difficult people. It is fabulous. It's 45 minutes just straight on, hands down, great information. I was on it before. I'll be listening to it again tomorrow. This is free for members to sign up for. And um, he's just a phenomenal trainer. I've seen him a number of times. He works with chambers and the information is excellent. So if you need CEUs, it's also a certified training. So you're still able to sign up for that. It is not going to be live streamed. So you cannot just watch it on uh, Facebook. You're going to have to sign up to be part of it. We also still have our Brevard business support. So there's a number of joint webinars that are coming up with uh, June 4th. So tomorrow as well, it's uh, uniting your employees for empowerment during COVID-19. I think, you know, a lot of us are feeling stressed and that's usually when we check in, it's like, hey, how are you doing? How are you feeling? Uh, because it is, you know, this is tough for all of us. And, you know, I'm fortunate that I, I Thank every day. I am very grateful. I don't have children that I'm having to deal with to, to be a teacher as well as try and run my business from home. And, um, you know, uh, we're a beautiful view here on the river. And so I, you know, understand that so many people have so much to deal with and it's very, very stressful. So, um, you know, being able to kind of understand what your employees are going through and, and empowering them. Um, so that would be a great one to join tomorrow. And then our, um, I'll just do the other ones, but I'll talk about the week long things that we have coming up. So June 9th is another joint one, making uh, marketing pivots during a crisis. So we all realize we're having to do things a little differently, unless you've always had your business online. We've all had to pivot on how we are doing the business. So that's on the 9th. And then uh, another joint webinar is accountability in action, remote work uh, edition. So 
uh, trying to remain accountable. And, you know, for some people working from home, especially if you're an extrovert is probably your biggest nightmare. Uh, when you like being and hugging people and saying hello and, you know, just that um, constant contact with people, this I'm sure has been just horrific. For introverts, they are probably happiest little clams and not so bad. So, um, but you want to, have your plan of how to work when you are at home. Uh, you know, we are slowly opening up, but we're still, I think some people will be continuing to work remotely. So that's another great one. Our multicultural virtual happy hour, we have another one June 19th, and then our BBP is on the 30th. So that's our Brevard Business Professionals. Shannon Gronage is our chairwoman on that. And uh, Florida Power and Light is sponsoring that one. So we're pretty excited about that. Um, oh, there we go. Okay, so back to business week is going on next week. So Florida Power and Light was uh, great to sponsor this initiative. So we have one hour segments the entire week, Monday to Friday, uh, nine to five. Wednesday morning is the only time we have blocked off to not be able to do this, but we are looking at doing it on um, Instagram where we can have a conversation with you, talk about your business. It'll be like an interview that I talk to you about um, what you're doing to keep your employees safe, to keep your customers safe, how you might've pivoted with your business. It's kind of, it'll be about five minutes at the most, maybe 10, but we'll have actually our big scissors here virtually that we can kind of do a little ribbon cut with so that you are able to put that on your website. It goes on the Chambers website as well uh, as long and along with our Instagram. So kind of nice exposure. You don't have to be a Chamber member in order to participate. Carolina has a calendar so you can go in and click on the calendar to sign up for the hour that you're looking for. We'll make sure that you know, you are happy with it. It's not like we can do tons of takes because this is not, you know, the professional camera crew coming out. Uh, but we really want to showcase back to business that what you've done or if you've never closed, uh, what you offer. I think it's a great opportunity for everybody to um, see what, you know, you've been up to. So, so we're pretty excited about that. That's going to be a whole week. So if you're going to try and get in touch with us, we are going to be MIA for an entire week. Uh, we just think that it's a great, just great value um, for the members and great opportunity to kind of get the word out there. Um, I think the biggest concern for a lot of people is feeling safe to go back into businesses and knowing that businesses have, have what they've done in order to make sure they are, um, you know, continuing and doing things correctly. One of the problems with the state of Florida is we are fourth in the country for litigation. And I think a lot of businesses are concerned that they might be following all the CDC guidelines correctly and yet they could get sued. So we want to showcase what you're doing. And like I said, even if you've never closed, it's just a great opportunity to um, be on the Chamber Facebook page and you can use it on your own as well. So. Um, next month we have marketing your business in the age of um, COVID the economy is reopening now what Dan Ward is the president of uh, Curly and Pin and they're from or uh, Maitland area so we're pretty excited to have him come and just give us some ideas and we've had a number of different marketing topics so I think he's uh, terrific and that'll be a really interesting one August we have scheduled uh, Dr. Mullins so he'll be talking for he's um, I think everybody knows the superintendent of Brevard Public Schools I think that's a big concern for everybody that has children about the reopening and what they are doing to keep uh, children safe, the teachers safe, bus drivers, I mean, everybody, um, their custodiars, um, custodial employees. So uh, that's gonna be August. So we have some great speakers coming up for our luncheon. And then our next is the Disaster Recovery Week. So it's July 20th to 24th. Like I said, we didn't want to do half hour sessions. We know being on Zooms, even this hour is a long time. So we've break, we're breaking them down into five step sessions. We're starting with um, just like the overview of um, 
you know, your checklist that you should look at for your business, because I think Kevin was really good with saying, you know, getting those photos taken. So you have your before picture. So you've got record of it that you are looking at your insurance. So we're talking about the overview will be the first day. The second day is going to be insurance needs. So, you know, what do you have disaster recovery insurance? Do you um, have, um, key employee insurance should something happen to your one uh, you know if you're a lone entrepreneur and something happens to you is that the kind of insurance that you might need so we're going to talk about the different kind of insurances things to look for in your policy Wednesday is going to be workplace safety especially with coming back with COVID you know things that you um, should have in place but there's other things to look at as well you know um, rugs that might people might trip over um, environment that isn't uh, safe is there mold there I mean all the things that you want to make sure that are going to uh, ensure that your workplace is safe for your employees and your customers uh, we're looking then on the fourth day about computer and remote working security uh, we've had uh, with Morsecom, you know how fabulous they are. And for a lot of, I think, home-based businesses and smaller companies, they might not have servers. So we're looking at uh, bringing it down to a level that what are the basics you should have on your computer working at work or remotely, uh, things that you should be looking for, how often you should back up, what are protocols that you should be doing. Um, we really think that, you know, I've gotten so many calls from my credit card company about my cards being, you know, hacked or, or the information being hacked and they're sending me a new one. So what is your business doing to make sure that, you know, you've got your information secure and safe? And then um, what recovery looks like. So should an event take place, how you recover. So a company like Five Star um, or Serve Pro. If you have a fire, who do you call? Uh, what does that look like? Um, if you have the water that's leaked from an upper um, company in, in your office building and water's flooded through everything, you know, do you have that list in place of the first calls to make, how should you mitigate the damage? A lot of insurance companies, you know, ask, well, what did you do? You know, if you left it for a whole week and then molds just permeated your building, uh, they're usually not as nice to you um, about the damage that's there. They, you know, they expect you to help with mitigation. So that's going to be our disaster recovery week, July 20th to 24th. We have sponsorship opportunities available and we are putting the speakers together. It is going to be a professional, it's one for two productions that's putting it on. So it is not like this chamber chat. Uh, it will be, um, you know, we're having, like I said, a qualified uh, production company putting this all together. Sponsors are going to have their logos at the beginning, the end. They're going to have um, ads that will be placed in the middle of, um, and they'll be all five days. So huge exposure for this event. Um, and then we have our guide. So we are actually um, getting further along with this. So we, like I said, didn't want to print it until we're able to get it in everybody's hands, but we have looked it over. Um, our new members, which is great for them, are able to get into the guide. So that's fabulous. And as soon as, you know, things are open where the city is the largest um, collection of these guides. So they distribute at their, um, community centers at city hall so until they're open 100 percent, we don't want to be shipping 5,000 of these guides to them and um, nobody's going to see them so we want to make sure they're the most up to date as well so you can still get in there if you're interested in an ad we still have that available and we're giving you a free week on our digital sign if you're um, purchasing uh, the full page ad so next we have our uh, digital sign. We've had a lot of uh, people that have been putting ads on that sign. The traffic is getting busier and busier now. So it is 25,000 cars a day before this pandemic. We're going by our, our chamber every single day. So the numbers aren't quite back up to 25,000, but it's amazing how many are going along US-1. So we still have that special offer of $200 for six weeks. So if you want to get your logo out there, it's a perfect opportunity to do that. Um, our, we also have our other marketing sponsorships. So 
We have our chamber chat. So if you want to sponsor a chamber chat, the e-blast where it just goes out, it's your own page that goes out. Because uh, you know on our chamber um, intel, we will put your thing in there with a click to your your flyer. But if you want to actually be sponsored and shown on the intel where when people are opening it up, you're there, we have that opportunity, our Facebook posts and social media blast package. So uh, that's still available for everybody. And our next thing is our Chamber Plus app. So everybody should have that on your phone now because you can sign up for any event on it. You can check all the members on that. So if you are wondering how you get in touch with Tracy at Everything Brevard, uh, if you have downloaded that app, you have access to all our members. So please get that in there. You can update your page when you're in there um, and put all your profile information. If you've never updated your profile as well, um, please, uh, you know, we have a, a, a hands-on training that Carolina did, so we can send that to you and uh, you can follow along with that. Um, our guide is still there, so if you do have an office space and you're wondering uh, what you should put in place, this uh, work hard, work smart, and work safe is excellent. It gives you so much detailed information on protocols to put in place, so I suggest um, revisiting uh, that playbook for reopening your business. And that's it. So follow us all. We'll have to add Instagram up there now that we are just going to be the queens of Instagram. So thank you all for joining us for our June Chamber of Commerce luncheon. And we want to thank um, everybody for participating and look forward to seeing you at our next event. So take care, everyone. If you need us, call us. I get the, all the phone calls or emails. So uh, please reach out to us and be safe. And we'll look forward to seeing everybody soon. Thank you.